Pair Trading Powerful and often overlooked way to profit in crypto markets. In this video I'm going to show you how to build and backtest a simple BTC ETH trading strategy using Python. As you can see in this chart, the strategy takes advantage of statistical mean reversion to identify key buy and sell opportunities. By the end of this video you will know exactly how the strategy works and whether it can outperform a simple buy and hold approach. First step, fetching historical BTC ETH data. For this, I'm using the Y Finance library. You can also use the Binance API or any other crypto exchange data source you prefer. I'm using Y Finance and download price data for Bitcoin in relation to ETH. Starting 2023, pulling the adjusted close column and renaming it to BTC ETH and then start calculating what I need for my trading bands, which is rolling statistics, namely the mean spread, which is just rolling over the BTC ETH column for 30 days and pulls the mean. Same story for the standard deviation. So it's rolling over the same column, then for 30 days again, and is pulling the standard deviation. The upper band then, is the mean spread plus two times the spread standard deviation. The lower band is the mean spread minus one times the spread standard deviation. So you have more leeway on the upper band than on the lower band. Dropping some NANs and then returning whatever I'm getting there, which we are doing in the next step simply just calling the function fetch BTC ETH data. So let's see what we are coming up with here. So data is looking like this. So the BTC ETH column, which is simply the relation BTC ETH. So how can you read that? 14.57 ETH you were getting for one Bitcoin in January 2023 and today you're getting 26 ETH for BTC. So you saw it in the chart in the very beginning, the spread has distinctly increased here. Now that we have our data and trading bands ready, let's move on to implementing the actual trading strategy. Next step, implementing the trading strategy. Here's how it works. We buy Bitcoin when the BTC ETH ratio falls below the lower band and sell Bitcoin when the ratio rises above the upper band. So let's go through the key logic. We have a balance in ETH, which is our initial balance. And our assumption here is we have one ETH as our initial balance. We don't hold any Bitcoins, so we are setting that to zero. And we are working with position flag, which I just called in Bitcoin, which is initially false. So we just have one ETH. In this trade log, we are keeping track of the executed trades. Then we start looping. We are just going over every single row of the data frame I showed you before. So for iron range length data, and then we're keeping track of the date, then of the ratio, which is just the BTC ETH ratio. And same story for the upper band and lower band. This is just going over the upper band and lower band in every single row. And then we're getting to the buying logic. And the buying logic is we check if the BTC ETH ratio falls below the lower band. If it does, and we are not already holding BTC, which is initially the case, as I just showed you, we calculate how much BTC to buy using our ETH balance and lock the trade in the end. So BTC holdings are just the balance in ETH, initially one, divided by the ratio on the specific date then you set the position flag to true as you just bought Bitcoin. And then you just append the details of the trade to your trade log. Right, so just date, 
what you did. So in this case, you bought BTC. Keep track of the ratio, your Bitcoin holdings and your balance in ETH. Next is the selling condition. Now, if the BTC ETH ratio rises above the upper band and we are holding Bitcoin, we sell the Bitcoin back to ETH and also lock the trade. So we have a new ba balance ETH now, which is just our Bitcoin holdings times the ratio. Then we set the Bitcoin holdings to zero again, set the position flag to false, and we are pending to the trade lock. So in this case, date, sell Bitcoin ratio, and again, Bitcoin holdings and balance ETH. Now, very important, imagine you have an open trade in the end, which is actually the case, at least in my look back period. So we would be in the position currently. So we wouldn't close out the position yet. So we have to mark the position against the most recent price. This is what I'm doing here. So if I'm still in Bitcoin, I'm just naming it final ratio, and I'm just pulling the last available Bitcoin ETH ratio. So just the last available price for BTC ETH. And then same story, balance ETH would be my Bitcoin holdings times the final ratio. And then again, I'm appending to the trade log. And I'm just naming it as it is. So mark to market, as I'm just marking the current position to the market value. So the ratio again, Bitcoin holdings and the ETH balance. Last but not least, just transforming the trade log after the loop went through to a data frame. In the end, I just want to have my final balance in ETH and my trade log. And now, if this trading strategy would work, then I should end up with more ETH than I had in the beginning. So in the beginning, as you might remember, I had one ETH, so I'm setting that in the arguments here to one. So let's execute that whole construct and see what we're ending up with. So as you see, I'm already calling it here, final balance ETH and trade log, and then I'm just calling this function pair trading backtest mark to market. So let's execute that and see what we're ending up with. Final balance is 2.0131 ETH. So you see, we made quite some profits. Obviously, you have to take some influencing factors like trading fees into account, but nevertheless, more than 100% profit on that strategy. So you have the trade lock here as well. You see first trade was on the 8th of March. You bought Bitcoin, then you sold it on the 17th and so on and so forth. And what I just said, mark to market is actually the case. So last buy was on the 28th of November and we are currently marking it to the most recent price, which is just the price as of today. So our fi final ETH balance, you see it both here and here is 2.0131. So slightly more than 100%. Now that the back test is complete, let's visualize the results to see how the strategy performed over time. I mean, you already see it here, but it's always nice to see it in a visual way. So I'm not going to bore you with the details here. So what I'm just doing here is I'm just setting up a, a line plot here and then add the BTC ETH uh, course or, or, or price as a line chart. Same story for the mean spread, the upper band and the lower band. So you see that nice corridor here. So let me just pull that so you can actually see what I coded here. So you see, I just gave it some colors here, orange, red and green, some uh, alpha, which is just the transparency here and some style things. You don't have to do that. It's just that the chart is uh, looking more fancy. And then Obviously, you have to take care of the buying and selling signals because you want to have it in the chart. And what I'm just doing here is define buy points and sell points, screen the trade log and then simply screen where this was happening. So I just 
uh, add the buy and selling signals to the, the chart with the scatter plot by just pointing or just mapping those points here as buying and selling signals. So how does this work? Trade log, trade log action is buy Bitcoin are my buy points and my sell points. Same story for sell Bitcoin. And then you just have the buy dates as the buy points date. So just the date column of that sell date, same story. And then you just scatter plot those buying and selling dates here so that you have those nice uh, buying and selling points in your chart. chart. Then some legend, title, X labeling, Y labeling, nothing too complicated here. So let's just execute that and actually call the function. So we're getting what we want to see here. So as you see, we have this beautiful chart showing the strategy with buying and selling signals. So as I said, you have the BTC ETH ratio here. You have the mean spread and the corridor here, upper band and lower band, and you have the buying and selling signals. Last but not least, did we outperform buy and hold? So let's actually check. As you saw, we have roughly 100% profit on the strategy. So let's see uh, what the buy and hold uh, return would be. But you can already calculate it in your head here. It's not that good as the strategy because you have 26 in relation to 14, which is not 100%. Uh, so let's calculate that actually. So this one, this one, so the buy and hold would end up with 80% profit and the ETH uh, or the Bitcoin ETH ratio strategy would end up with a 100% profit without taking trading fees and slippage and other costs into account. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you found this as interesting as I did. And I'm looking forward to see you in the upcoming videos. Cheers. Bye bye.